Bill. Well, it's really good to see you again. Likewise. Yeah, how are you enjoying the show? Uh, well, you know, notwithstanding there's a little bit of a over uh, uh, context that we're all in thing. I think everyone's uh, uh, is uh, soldiering on and, yeah. and the show's gone well and I'm somewhat pleased with how many people did make the deliberate decision to, to show up and I'm glad they did. Yeah, people are still still taking care of business. Yeah, yeah. but a lot more, um, a lot more a lot elbow. More yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So in the aero market, it's almost, I, my opinion is it's almost like an over choice. So it'd be kind of easier if you could just pick A or B, but there's so many interesting service providers and the way, particularly since this is a satellite show, the Leos and the Mios and the GSOs and what's going on in the industry in general, right. from the satellite general in general, and then the implications to, to aeronautical specifically yeah. are, wow, we'd like to use these services, but there's so many to choose from. K, you know, we've, I think we've moved from the KA, KU discussion, but this year I think it's more about the Leo and Mio. Like, can I do Leo only? Can I do GSO right. only? Mm -hmm. And also the frequency bands and how will, which of these constellations are gonna go up, and which ones aren't gonna go up. Yeah. And uh, I don't wanna make a mistake from an air, I think from an airline perspective, it's like we really want, you know, we've always had a little bit, of, a lot of due diligence, but you know, since generally as a, as a supplier, we're once removed from the airline's decision. Mm -hmm. Wow, the airlines are doing a lot more due diligence at the supplier level. Yeah. So they're, they used to just say, well, the service provider, that's their problem. Now the airlines are definitely much more proactive and we want to yeah. we talk to your suppliers. We want to know what's going on in our planes. We want to make sure that what you're telling us about the the relative merits uh, of that uh, of the supplier's products that we're putting on the planes are in, in fact. So we, we, we our dance card, I think I've said before, is even more so uh, airlines, mm -hmm. which used, you know, why would we talk to an airline? Because we're generally not selling to them, but the airlines right. have shown a lot more interest in. It's different. Yeah. yeah, it's really different. People are getting wise. They're hip it's, to the game. Well, it's good. Yeah. And well, and our feeling is, yeah, we, we love to, uh, we think a well-educated customer, uh, you know, the more we can get across to them in terms of the relative merits, just like our competitors are doing, the better our, the outcome will be for us, we believe. Do you think it's a little bit like you almost have to do like the it's like a platform, it's like a platform that you're providing now for people to do lots of stuff? Like what in-flight entertainment are kind of saying now, you know, guys like Panasonic and Talos are opening up the systems and saying, look, yep. we want to be agnostic. We want to invite oh. people to build their systems and their solutions on top of this plat basic platform. No, abs absolutely. In fact, are we looking at a, a situation like this here with well, connectivity? As yes. Well? I mean, we didn't coin the phrase, but I think yeah. the phrase that's also come up this year is a lot software defined. So right. software to find satellites right. that, that you don't have to be uh, made uh, uniquely for each other. So the satellites will be less expensive. They could be smaller. Software to find antennas, which we think we can legitimately discuss this as a software to find antenna okay. to the extent we're agnostic with respect to the different service providers. We're agnostic whether this is a GSO or an NGSO satellite. We're, we want to be all those things. And when paired with a software to find modem and a software to find uh, low noise am amplifier, then you have a software defined system. Now, the details of that are a little bit complicated in terms of the software defined part. Right, Some I can people like it the, is. A lot yeah. of things are complicated. Yeah, here. yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. But we're doing our part that we can. We're uh, uh, on the antenna side to provide a software defined antenna. Okay, and uh, this antenna recently did some really cool stuff on a That's test right. bed that you guys are super happy about. Can you explain that? Yeah, so to introduce everyone to w what this is, so a lot of folks, those who do know our company, ThinCom, probably know us mostly from the, our, the 2KU product that GoGo does. Yep. So we're very proud of that. That's a KU-based system. It's really a software-defined capable system, although we sell that through, uh, you know, through GoGo. Uh, Delta Airlines is one of the big adopters for that, but along with other airlines. Uh, this system takes all those good attributes. So the attributes we have from that system are as we, to date, we have like 15 million hours of flight time. Kind of great, it's kind of a crazy number. We're on 1,500 aircraft. Yeah. Uh, we're doing you know thousands of flights per day. And we've been able to establish that the MTBF of that system, which is a meantime before failure, but really what it means to the airline. The airlines, once they put the radome on, they don't want to have to take it off until at least a B check or a C check. So it's really important, the reliability of the system for more than just obvious reasons, because it, it translates to cost. It might cost $20,000 a day to take a plane offline to, to do that. So reliability is really important, and we establish that. So this takes all the lessons learned and all the great attributes of the 2KU system and takes it to KA. So this system can work with uh, GSO satellites. It, it covers the entire international uh, frequency bands. So to that, that's the software-defined part. So it can work with different, it can work with all sorts of modems. It has its own tracking ability. 
Uh, and then uh, segueing to the particulars of the flight test we did, mm -hmm. which is was which was uh, recently, we actually put this antenna. Although it's not intended for a G3 Gulfstream aircraft, we used a G3 uh, test aircraft. We flew this up and down the eastern seaboard. We went and did. Uh, we worked together with SCS, uh, and we actually put this on the O3B network. So we were trying to impress people, and we were trying to also, from an engineering standpoint, break the system or find out where it breaks. So mm -hmm. I'll give you the, yeah. the details here in a second. But we flew that on the on the uh, on the system. So we did Mio to Mio satellite handoffs. We did Mio's to Geo, Geo to Geo. But essentially, the, what we're trying to provide, which goes with that software to find, is a seamless. The airline doesn't want to have to worry about like, oh, I that's don't have it. a service here or a service there. Mm -hmm. They want a seamless uh, capability, and that's what we're bringing uh, forward here. And we actually, so we, we, we banked the plane, we closed links at below 10 degree elevation angle, which is kind of a crazy low elevation angle on the, on the plane. And also the fact that we put this on a G3, although we don't put it, uh, it because it's smaller, uh, we also are actively looking at uh, places, including RJs, Embraer 175s, 717s, which is not an RJ, but in terms of rear engine planes, we think this is going to have huge traction. And we already have some adoptions, unfortunately, we can't share those yet. But I can tell you we're doing STCs, active STCs of the system right now, so that would indicate you must have adoptions. Just can't tell you who they, how, who they are yet. What is the next step for this process then? Obviously, like you said, it was a test. You were trying to impress people. Yep. Um, what's the next, I guess, um, actual Sh step? Sure. So well, the next is to, well, I, I mean, incrementally speaking, it's to be able to go public with these adoptions. Right. You'll be hearing some folks who are adopting the system for as their KA band system. Okay. You'll also get some elaboration on what networks they're planning to use these on, but it's a number of different satellite networks. Again, this goes to the versatility of the system and not wanting to work with a proprietary, you know, I think from an airline perspective, an airline decision maker perspective, you don't want to make a, a bad decision. Right. So the best way or a good way to prevent that from happening is to keep all your options open. So this leaves, this is a product that putting on your aircraft, you can put it on big aircraft, you can put it on little aircraft. You can work with all the different service providers. If you don't like that service provider after a while, you can move to a different service provider. So it gives you that sort of fle flexibility. So we like to, even though it, it sounds a little bit corny, we like to call this a future-proof uh, solution. So it's the, it's the highest performing KA band flying antenna today, and we think it'll continue to be the highest performing, uh, best value product uh, going into the future. Wicked, well thank you so much for your time today, Ben. Thank you, thank you.